In this lecture, I would like to go over an example of a Turing machine. Uh, I think after the abstract definitions of the last lecture, uh, this will be helpful to further familiarize yourself with this concept. Um, we would like to construct a Turing machine that uh, does the following. So it gets a, a binary input and uh, it outputs one if the input is of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n, and it outputs 0 uh, for all other inputs. So if the input is not of this form, it will output 0. So we could say that m accepts the language l, uh, 0 to the n, 1 to the n. Um, and remember that was uh, one of the languages that uh, no finite automata uh, could uh, accept. So here uh, we would see a first significant difference between uh, the computational power of Turing machines and finite automata. So how would such a machine work? Um, let's start it with the usual input. So we assume we have a string w given over the binary alphabet. And uh, this, uh, as defined in the last lecture, this will be put on uh, the work tape and uh, each bit of the input in one cell. Initially, there are no other non-blank cells on the tape. So to the left and the right of the input are only blank cells. But assume now our input is of the form that we want to recognize. So assume we have like 0, 0, 0, and then uh, 1, 1, 1 in the input. The idea now would be to scan the input from left to right. Remember, we always start on the cell that is to the left of the input. Right? Scan it from left to right. And first, whenever we read zero here, use an area to the right of the input over here as kind of a counter area, where we create a counter that counts increases whenever we read a zero. So we increase this counter um, by one. And then when we uh, stop reading zeros and uh, read ones, we decrease the counter here accordingly by one. And then at the end, once we hit the blank here, that means we have read through all the input, we'll just check whether our counter in this area here is uh, also back to zero or blank, or if there's still a symbol left there, and then uh, we can uh, decide accordingly. So again, the idea would be scan the input from left to right. As long as we read zeros, increase the counter, decrease the counter once we read ones by one accordingly. Once we hit the end of the input, we check the counter whether it's all the way back to zero. We have to be a little bit careful though uh, when devising our program, namely we could have the situation where we have the same number of zeros and the same number of ones in the inputs, something like this. So if we just went through the input now from left to right and increase the counter every time we read a zero and decrease every time we read a one, this input would also result in a counter zero. But of course it is not of the form that we uh, want. So it's not of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n. So once we read the first one, we have to account for that in our program by saying, OK, now from now on, we don't want to read any more zeros. Otherwise, we'll um, output 0 that is not accept right away. So let's try to work out the instructions needed for this machine in a little bit more detail. So as usual, we start by uh, pointing the read right hat at the cell immediately to the left of the input. And now in the first step, we would just go to the right to start reading uh, the input. So we moved our read right hat just one to the uh, position to the right. In terms of a transition function or instruction, this would look as follows. So we assume our starting state 
uh, QS is just the state zero. And if in state zero, and we read a blank symbol, we just leave it a blank symbol. So we write the blank symbol again, go right and go to state one. So after executing this instruction, uh, our Turing machine would be in state one and would be pointed one cell to the right of the initial uh, cell, which is this cell. To make our life notationally a little bit easier, I'll just write instead of the transition function, I'll write a quintuple um, uh, collecting all uh, the information in a, in a single vector here. But the information remains the same. If in state zero, reading blank, put a blank there, go right, and go into state one. So now we are in state one, and our read uh, right hat points to this cell. So the first uh, bit of the input. So now we would expect to read zeros. So in, if we do that, what we do is we read a zero, we delete the cell, go all the way till we hit the first blank, that means to the right side of the input, and then here add one to our counter. And our counter will be implemented just by putting ones on uh, the uh, tape whenever we encounter another zero. The first instruction of this subroutine could something look like uh, this. So if in state one, we read a zero, we delete this zero by putting a blank on it and go right and go to state two. So state two would then uh, somehow describe a subroutine, which then would take us all the way to the first blank to the right of the input. So after executing this instruction, we would be in state two. We have deleted uh, this uh, zero here, replaced it by a blank, and moved our read uh, right hat one position to the right. So now we are in uh, state two, which indicates, as I said before, a subroutine where we have to move all the way to the right of the input and increase our counter uh, by one over here. A set of instruction that can accomplish this for us are the following. So you see here we're in state two. And no matter what we read, we always leave what we read uh, the same. So we leave it untouched, go right and stay in two. Same thing if we read a one, we leave it untouched, go right and stay in state two. That means as long as I read input bits, right, non-blank bits, I'll just leave them as they are and go right. Only when I hit a blank, so the first blank to the right of the input, I go right and go into state three. So I go and go and go, then I hit the blank. Well, I do go one more position right, but then I'm in a new state. So after going through this subroutine here, I would uh, be on this uh, cell and uh, be in state three. So now we have reached our counter. And if we get there for the first time, of course, there will be a blank in here. And we just have to write a one to put in the first uh, bit for our counter. If we have read multiple uh, zeros of the input already, then there will be already a few ones here. And we just have to now first go to the end of the counter, right? So the, to the first blank to the right of the counter to uh, add a one there. So this increase of the counter uh, is accomplished by the, those two uh, instructions here. So the first one just says, well, as long as I'm not at the right end of the counter, just go right, right? As long as I read ones, the ones symbolize the counting bits, right? Go right and stay in state three. However, when I reach a blank, 
replace this blank by a one. That means we increase our counter by one. And then we can go left and go into state four, where state four now means go all the way back and uh, do the same thing again. So running our program here, we would put a one here because we're already at the right end of the counter. It was, it was zero so far, right? We put a one here and now we would go one to the left and uh, enter state four. The next thing we would do is now move all the way to the left again until we hit the first blank to the left of the input. Remember that we deleted the first bit already. So by reading through uh, the input, we will successively put more blanks here so we don't need to read it all over again. We just need to re read the remaining bits here. So we would now go back here using a similar routine that we did uh, use before to go all the way to the right of the input and then start over again. So if we re go one to the right, read a zero, we go all the way over here, go to the right of the counter, put a, put a one there, then go back to the left of the input. Of course, this zero here will then be replaced by a blank and so on. So eventually we will have read all the zeros, replaced them by blanks and have uh, a counter here that represents the number of zeros we have read. Well, now we do the same thing. We go back to the uh, left of the remaining input. And, uh, and then in the next stage, we see, oh, we're not reading a zero anymore, but we're reading a one. So in that case, we have to go now and start deleting bits from our counter. So if we read uh, a one here, right, instead of uh, a zero after going back all the way to the left of the remaining input. Well, we go into delete mode. We go seek the first uh, blank here, then seek the end of the counter, replace the uh, um, last bit of the counter uh, by a blank. So after we've done that, we go back, go to the next remaining bit of the input, go back again, if, go to the end of the counter, replace it, uh, the one there by zero, uh, by blank, sorry, and then uh, do go back again till we eventually don't find a one anymore. And if in the end our counter is all the way reduced back to all blanks, so zero again, well, then we accept. Of course, in this whole procedure, there's a lot of things and details we have to pay attention to. For example, what if we read a one directly instead of a zero first, or if we don't read anything, if we have an empty input? Well, then we have to, if we read a one immediately, well, we have to go into a non-accepting state right away, that means we have to write zero as an output. Or if we don't read anything, if we have the empty zero, well, by definition, that belongs to the set of strings we want to uh, accept. So we have to uh, make sure that we then uh, output one. Also, there's a lot of little details we have to uh, take into account when we, while running back and forth here as the input shrinks and the counter enlarges and then first and then decreases again and so on. But I hope uh, those first few steps and instructions give you a little bit of an idea of how a Turing machine works. It's not easy to program Turing machines by any means. You'll see the program, the final program will be quite long, but um, it works and I hope you're, you're convinced of this now, pretty much like any programming language. So you have subroutines, you have uh, loops, you can implement a while, and you can implement an if then. So all this structure you have available in a, in a modern programming language, you can implement uh, in the Turing machine program. 
and I've, I hope I've hinted enough that you know now how to do it. I will not give you a complete program for uh, this function or set we want to accept. Uh, I leave this as an exercise. Um, but I do hope that you are convinced now that it can be done.